Yeah, I mean, from about the second quarter of 2020 through uh, obviously the, the second quarter of 20. 22. I mean, you know, the trucking industry was in a great place. You can make a lot of money and a lot of operators bought a lot of trucks and in, in increased capacity. Right. And I mean, if you're making so much money, why would you not buy another truck? And that even trucks were trading well above what they should have been trading worth their, their true value, like semis. I mean, it was ridiculous in the, that market. Right now, this is horrible news for the trucking industry. Right. But let me ask you this. Who is this great news for? I'll tell you exactly who this is great news for. Anyone that has to ship physical products around the United States of America, this is great news for you. You're likely going to see increased margins and uh, like the, the cost of just trucking has gone down immensely. Never mind that. On top of that, if you have to ship anything overseas, that cost has come down immensely over the past year. And so it's a horrible thing for the trucking industry. It's the best thing possible for anybody that has to ship product around because the rates you're going to be able to get this year are just, uh, you know, basement level type rates in, in regards to that, right? Is trucking a leading indicator for the overall economy? I wouldn't look at it as a leading indicator in terms of forward looking, okay? Because there's many times the trucking industry looks great and then it gets bad and you, you couldn't really tell at the specific time. It's a great indicator in telling you exactly where the economy's at at that moment. But it's not a great indicator in telling you how the economy is going to do moving forward. That's my opinion and perspective on that. You know, I thought this was interesting, right? Take two made a huge move here today. Take two interactive was up over 11% in regards to stock. And this is because basically there's a lot of excitement and hype that uh, the next Grand Theft Auto is coming out next year with GTA six. No, this was fascinating for me because I saw the stock up 11 some percent on that excitement. And all I could think is, who, who doesn't know this is coming? Like everybody in their grandma knows this is coming, right? Likely next year at some point in time. And so for me to like see that, it was just a, a little laughable. I'm just like, wow, the stock moved that much. I'm like, do people not pay attention to, of, to like what, what games are coming in the pipeline and things like that? Like, you know, anybody that's a gamer knows that GTA 6 is likely coming next year. Like that's not, that's not like crazy news to anybody. So I just found it fascinating that the investors were so excited about this and they, they you know, that stock moved up over 10% here today. Interesting. But if anybody owns take two stock, congrats to you guys. Okay. Congrats to you. Foot Locker. Okay. I woke up to see this stock, which is a stock I own in my dividend only portfolio down 27%. I saw that and I was pretty in shock. I guess you can say I'm like Foot Locker down 27%. And, and what I initially thought was I thought, you know, they probably like, you know, missed a, missed a number here and there, you know, maybe a few numbers, uh, but I, I didn't think it would be a disaster. And I was like, it's probably some overreaction by the market, probably buy the stock next week, something like that, right? And then I looked into the numbers and I said, oh, they actually deserve to be down 20 plus percent because this was a complete disaster here. Check this out. Total sales decreased 11% year over year. Calm store sales were down 9%. Now, for anybody that's maybe a little newer to the market, you don't know much about calm store sales and, and you know what's a good number, bad number, those sorts of things. This is, a, this is the most important metric you can ever look at for a physical retailer, or which obviously Foot Locker is known as a physical retailer, right? Yeah, they sell stuff online, but at the end of the day, they're known as a physical retailer or restaurants, okay? This is everything. Calm store sales, even a Starbucks, something like that. Like, this is always the most important thing. So usually you want to see the, you know, comp store sales being up, right? That's ideal situation. If they're down, you want to see down like in the one to 3% range, then you're just not the end of the world down three to 5%. Now we're talking about, okay, things are getting ugly over 5%, like five to 7%. That's pretty disastrous. When you see 9%, oh my gosh. Okay. That's beyond, beyond a disaster. Okay. They're also lower in the guidance. I mean, I can tell you just based upon the fact that I know comp store sales down that bend, you like, Automatically, I know they're going to have to lower guidance um, for the entire year, which is going to completely change the way you have to value a stock like this, right? We look a little deeper in the numbers, and this is so bad, it's hard to even explain, okay? Sales came in at $1.9 billion versus $2.1 billion, okay? So it's like, okay, you know, that's down a bit. Okay, cost of sales, here's a problem. Cost of sales didn't even go down even remotely close to as much as revenue was down, right? Revenue was down well over $200 million on a year-over-year -year basis, right? Nearly 250 mil. Cost of sales wasn't even down 100 mil. So there goes all your profitability right out the window, right there, right? And there we see it. Income from operations came in at 61 mil versus 220. Net income came in 
at $36 million for this quarter versus $133 million in the same quarter a year ago, okay? So right off the bat, am I, you know, w- would you say, I, uh, am I going to buy this stock, okay? The answer to that is, I don't know if I can really buy this stock right now because we got to look at guidance and what the company is expecting for guidance and then try to figure out, is this stock really a good value? Is this really a good deal? Does this really deserve my money versus other dividend opportunities out there right now? Here's the deal, okay? The guidance is a disaster. They were already expecting three and a half to five percent, uh, five and a half percent sales to be down year over year, right? Revenue, which, you know, I could understand, right? Especially for the valuation I did think I was getting the stock at, right? So down six and a half to eight percent now they're expecting. Oh boy, Home Store sales down seven and a half to nine percent, which basically means this weakness they're seeing in their business. They expect this to continue on. Gross margin twenty eight point six percent to twenty eight point eight percent. I mean, that's like a three percentage point roughly difference there. They're expected in gross margins. That's a huge, huge number. Non-GAAP EPS now, they're expecting $2 to $2.25. I mean, they were expecting $3.35 to $3.65. I mean, that means I fundamentally have to change the way I value the stock in a major, major way, not a minor way, right? They came in with, you know, Oh, we're expecting like 315 or 335 now. It's like, okay, you know, maybe pay a little less for it. But this is a disaster. This is why the stock deserved to be down 27% here today, right? And here's the deal. Now, if if we say this company's going to do $2 this year, roughly, right? The stock's $30. Basically, it means I'm paying about a 15 times 2023 numbers, okay? Uh, You know, before today, right? As of yesterday, I thought I was paying, you know, between a 10 and a 12 2023 numbers, P ratio. So now I'm paying actually substantially more for the stock than I was 24 hours ago, right? Based upon how bad their guidance came in with. And so although the, the drop looks massive, I don't know if I'm really getting this stock nearly as cheap as it looks on paper, right? Because of how bad they missed earnings. And so overall, this is a pretty big disaster for Foot Locker. I'm really, really disappointed. Am I going to sell the stock? No. Um, but I don't know if I can necessarily put money into this one right now with how bad they missed. Now, if the stock price comes down considerably more, there's a different scenario. Uh, but as of right now, it's not like I'm actually getting great pricing on this stock. And that's shocking. When you see a stock down 27%, to not be getting great pricing on that is pretty shocking, right? Because when the Fed's going to start cutting rates, there's going to be a lot that's going to happen, okay? Treasury yields will start going down in that scenario, and savings account yields are going to start going down. So why that's important is when these start going down, basically that money is going to have to start going other places, right? People could keep it in their savings account when it starts yielding only 2% instead of 4% and things like that. And people can keep them in treasuries in, in, you know, if they're yielding 2 or 3% versus 5%. But what more than likely usually happens is people start funneling some of that money back into, guess what, the stock market, Okay. Now, also, when you cut rates, long-duration assets usually increase, okay? It's, it doesn't work perfectly as far as the timing. Sometimes there's a few months of a lag there, and sometimes you can get some volatility and move down in the market in the short term. But ultimately, a lower-rate environment is great for long-duration assets. Think a la growth stocks. And the way you, a lot of folks run DCF models is they essentially divide out their numbers by whatever the Fed funds rate is at the end of the day. And so if you're dividing by a, a five number, it's a, it's a much different number than if you're dividing by two or dividing by one, if the Fed funds rates at one, right? And so nonetheless, Wall Streeters, algorithms, everybody's willing to pay much more for assets when rates are lower rather than higher. And that's something obviously we experienced in a pretty extreme example in 2022 as the rates were just kept going up, stocks just kept going down and down and down, right? We felt the, the full effects of that. And so do keep that in mind. And obviously if, you know, Fed starts dropping rates, big ticket loans, will start to increase, right? Uh, you know, it's just, that's just what happens. And real estate will start to wake up if rates start to drop again. A lot of people have been holding out on, on moving and things like that because let's be honest, mortgage rates have been six plus percent. And so a lot of people are just don't want to move. And so if you drop rates and then mortgage rates start coming down to the fives and then the fours, you'll start to wake up this real estate market. And um, I think that would be a healthy thing because a lot of people feel uncomfortable when the real estate market is not in a healthy place, okay? And so do, do just keep that in mind so when the Fed does lower, and, and it's a big question of when do the, does the Fed lower? Is it the summer? Is it the fall? Is it the winter? Or is it next spring, okay? Um, my thinking is it's sooner rather than later. When I look at the company's earnings that are coming in, when I look at what uh, Trueflation data has us at, and what I think CPI is going to over the next few months, 
I think it's sooner rather than later. We'll see what happens with that, uh, but that's kind of my perspective in regards to that.